All okay, right, good afternoon. Friend. Good afternoon or good morning or good good evening. Anywhere you are connecting. I'm presenting on behalf of Michael at this can we I'm on behalf of uh, Michael and IT, we apologize for the for coming late due to technical problem they are having there in, in IT Ibadan. So I will try as much as possible to 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 present and then when you have the questions then we can we can discuss thank you very much for your for listening uh the outline of the presentation goes like this because of the time it's already shown on the screen we look at the overview of the product profile garriba then we talk about the sop development for tpa which is texture profile analysis of eba and then development sorcery profile analysis of of eba then we talk about the spectral collection of the male and omega ray using the bench top names. Um, Gary is a creamy white um, product. It's a granular flour, uh, which is produced from fermented gelatinized fresh cassava root. And um, from the Gary itself, it can be consumed in two forms. It's either you soak it in water and take it with uh, sugar and roasted granite or you try to put it in hot water to form a, a dough, which is called eba. And this is being hit with uh, different sauces. It can be vegetables, it can be um, uh, so different sauces, it can be fish or it can be meat, uh, beef. So this is an example of uh, gari. This is an example of gari soaking in cold water. This is an example of eba, which is consumed with uh, vegetable. Uh, the conventional approach, which is traditional approach of, um, of preparation of um, gari, uh, goes like this. You start with uh, raw roots, which is peeled and then it's been washed. After that, it's been grated. And after being grated, it's been fermented. Normally in Southwest, the fermentation between two to three days, but in Southeastern part of Nigeria, they don't usually ferment after grating they just press and then it goes to the next step so the fermentation is the major step which differentiates gari consumed in southwest and garu consumed in southeast eastern parts of nigeria so you press after pressing then you roast uh, using uh, open fire and then after roasting then you you sieve it to have a uniform uh, granules uh, what we did is to standardize the procedures for gari productions. Uh, if I go back to the to the steps, these are the unit uh, operations of gari production. In all this, it's not standardized. So the 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 the, the roasting, the roasting time, the the, the 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 pressing to the level of certain moisture content is not standardized. So what we just want to do is to standardize the the SOP, I mean, the, 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 the preparation of Gary, starting from the, the roots down to the, to the Gary product. So to standardize it so that we can re remove all the factors that can affect the, 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 the end product of Gary to, to, so that we can be able to say the effect of, uh, uh, of varieties alone on, 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 on the Gary product. So the, what we did is we start with the materials, uh, the materials we use for the standardizations include the infrared thermometer, the scale, the roasting pan, the, the, the plastic bowls, the muslin clothes, and the pressing device. In the laboratory, union operations, the preparation that we were standardized is the, these are the following things that we observe related to standardize the procedure. The relative humidity of the laboratory is being taken care of the weight of the pressing device, the roasting time, the roasting temperature, the size of the sieve, and then the moisture of the granulated mash and the dimension of the roasted pan. Uh, when you talk about the dimension of the roasting pan, we are talking about the diame diam diameter, the thickness, and the depth. So this is in control of the heat that is being used to, to roast, the, to roast the, the, the cassava mash into gari. Uh, the first step in the standardization is weighing of the of the fresh fruit. We we try to you know measure a standard root. That is, we want to know 
the quantity of the route that produce the, the certain quantity of gari. So we standardize the weighing of the fresh gari, then followed by the peeling and washing. So we try to, to you know, present all the 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 uh, uh, the critical control points with what what we must observe when we are peeling and washing in order to obtain a quality gari. So we have a lot of of things that we mentioned under peeling and washing. That means you have to peel, you have to wash to remove all the dirt, and then to make sure that um, um, you don't have any dirt at the final product of gari because it's a crucial step. So the quality of gari, that's why we have some gari that is dirty. There are some gari that contains a series of particles. It comes from the peeling and the washing stage. Then we talk about the grating. Uh, we standardize the grating. We use the me me mechanical grater, uh, which is laboratory step, the laboratory scale. Using the speed, we, we, we look at the speed and then the time using to grate the, 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 the weight of the or I mean, the certain fresh fruit that we have started with in step one. Then we weigh the mash as well. After weighing the mash, we 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 look at we start from sixty kilogram of fresh cassava root. That one gives us the three kilogram of fresh mass. So that is the standard we have in the in the laboratory. That we can see that is fifty percent of the root of, of of the mash we can get from the from the fresh cassava root. Then the fermentation of the mash is three to, three to four days. And then we dewatered using the laboratory devices, which we designed and then to press for certain period of, 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 of time using the certain pressure. So the, the really step that we, we took more, more, most, most of in the standard, in development of the standard is the roasting of, of, of the the watered mash, which is the, the mash from the fresh fruit, is the diameter of the roasting pan, which is at 3.7 centimeter. The depth of the roasting pan is 8 centimeter. The thickness of the roasting pan is 0 0.6 centimeter. The residual moisture content in the, the water granulated mash is 40 to 45 percent. And the quantity of granulated mash roasted is 350 grams. And then the roasting time is 20 minutes. Then the temperature is 67. 68 to 70 degree. With these parameter specifications, we are able to get a quality gari, very quality gari at the end as a product. So this is the gari sample we prepare using the standardized procedures. And uh, if you look at it, it's, it's very neat. It's, it has a good quality and then, which is very acceptable, yes, by the, by the, by the, by the, the evaluators or, or the qualities of those gari. So when you talk about, we talk about the smart protocols for preparation of EBA. So that is gari. Then when we want to prepare EBA, we standardize the procedure as well. So what are the materials we use? We use thermometer, the weighing scale, the cooker, the planetary dough mixer, and then the plastic bowls, then the aluminum foil stopwatch and the measuring cylinder. So when I go through the procedure, you will see, you, you will see how we use all these uh, materials that we use. So in the, in the procedures, 100 grams of gari, that is the standard we use. When we want to prepare a we take 100 grams of the gari samples, we into the plastic bowl in duplicate. Then the 300 ml of boiled water was measured into clean container. But in the Southeast, because their own EBA is a little bit harder than that of, it's, it's harder than that of, um, of, of the EBA eating in Southwest. So the, the quantity of water used for the Southeast EBA is 250 mils of boiled water, which was used for 100 grams of, of, of gari. So the, the water we boiled, that is just around uh, above 100 degrees centigrade water is boiled, then the water can be measured, 300 mil, and it's constituted gari in hot water, which is covered for 60 seconds to gelatinize. So after gelatinization, we transfer the dough. Um, I mean, the, we transfer the 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 the, the, the gelatinized um, gari. We put it in the dough mixer, and then the the speed of the mixer is 142 RPM for 60 seconds. So we have a good eba with a good texture, uniform one. Then we wrap it in aluminium foil, and then it's labeled in three digit codes. 
So the six cassava genotypes of contrasting cooking qualities were used for standardizing these um, protocols. We have the good, two good right, uh, genotypes, two intermediate and two bad ones. These are from next gen materials. So that is, um, it's, it's good to recognize that they will use the gen, uh, next gen materials to develop this protocol. So we take that a banana to develop the textual profile analysis. And the materials for textual profile analysis, we all know that texturometer, and then we have cylindrical probe, uh, compression probe, sampling cups, the warmer indelible marker, thermometer, agrometer, and the uh, aluminum foil. So why we wrap it in aluminum foil is to prevent the 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 to prevent to, to, to make to prevent contaminations and then to 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 make it warm when we put it in the in the warmer. So the EBA was prepared uh, for analysis. We, we refer to the protocol smart preparation of EBA, which I just described briefly. And then the sample were immediately wrapped in aluminum foil, as we have mentioned. The temperature was uh, monitored. As we have seen in this picture, the temperature was monitored. And then we tried to design um, a cup with, so that we can have a good um, size of, of the same size of EBA when we want to text for the texture, pro, uh, texture, texture uh, profiling of that uh, EBA. So it's really kind of open end plastic cups with dimension of two, two by two centimeter, 2.2 centimeter height, and 3.6 centimeter in diameter. So we use it for sampling. The, the, is the, the material used is the poly, poly, polypropylene material and, and polyphenyl chloride your yes, material and then it's, it's very thick and then and, and it's good it gives a good shape when we put a barrier it's give a good shape where we can put text for the texture so this is just a, equipment we use for the texture we have in ita and uh, equipment is uh, at, uh, the stable microsystem and then the, with this real number those this is the the probe we use and then this is the, the, the picture here. So the pretest speed is one mm per second, and the speed test is two mm per second. And the trigger force is 10, 10 gram, and then the percentage strain is 50%, and the temperature of the test is uh, 35 degrees centigrade. Uh, the, 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 the flow charts for the, for the text is, is just showing the picture. This is where the EBA is, is, is prepared and then transferred to the dough mixer to make a dough, a uniform dough, and then you have the dough. Then you can use this particular plastic um, cutter to cut it into different sizes, and then we put it in the in the texture meter to test the to test the, the texture. So this is just the parameters that we we obtain from the texture profiles, and then it's really from ad adhesiveness to cohesiveness, hardness and springiness, thickness and the, and um, chewiness. Now, what about the critical points of on, on for this procedure? Is number one, the EBA must be done in shortest time possible as the texture changes with time, and that is what we dictated in the procedure itself. So we need to put emphasis on it. When we say 60 seconds, it has to be 60 seconds. The same temperature must be maintained for both instrumental and sensory analysis. And that is where we test the, the, the temperature of EBA after we mix it in with the mixer. And then it has to be the state temperature. We put it when we are putting in, in the instrumental analysis. The trigger force of the compression probe must be carefully adjusted and instrument must be calibrated before analysis. So finally, the sample must be replicated for both instrumental and sensory analysis. I need to mention it there that um, this um, um, protocols, we develop it with uh, NRCRI, so we work with them and together. That is why I mentioned the, the EBA from Southeast and the EBA from Southwest. Okay, sorry. Yeah, this is uh, a, a typical picture of the texture profile of uh, of EBA that we would obtain. 
So there's no need to, to lay emphasis on it. Those are these are different samples we use, as I mentioned before. We have six samples, which compresses some good, bad, int good, intermediate, and bad. And then we, we, we have two samples in duplicate. So what about the sensory profile analysis protocols? We developed the protocols as well in collaboration with the with the with NRCR as well as I've mentioned. So the materials we use is serving plates, we thermometer, sensory board, warmer cups, and amino for. So the preparation of a buffer sensory analysis will follow that same protocol that have, we have developed. And then we use the six cassava genotypes for to prepare the EBA. And the samples were wrapped in aluminum protocol for smart preparation of EBA was used. Sample was served at the sample temperature. I need to mention here as well that um, the panelists were recruited and trained and uh, by the support, really support from the Professor Bolan Tebayo Bowen University. And then the 12 members were selected from the 21 panelists that participate in the preliminary sensory test. The sensory attributes, color, texture by hand, and the taste. So then the scale is 0 to 10 point scale. And the 10 gram of sample was served to individual panelists. And each sample was presented in duplicate. Test for sample takes up to 10 minutes. So this is just the, the result of um, the sensory texture profiling of a bar from different cassava varieties. So we have two of good varieties, we have two intermediate, we have two from, from this. So the mean of each of the total mean level of the um, sensory attributes that we observe is modality, stretchability, thickness, and softness. We can see that 2.29 on the on the 0 to 10 uh, donor scale, you remember? 1.73, 2.31, 1.99. So it's important to, 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 to know that there's a significant uh, uh, difference in these in this genotypes in modality and thickness as well as the softness, but no significant difference in stretch, stretchability. So it's you know, important information that between good variety, intermediate variety, bad variety, based on the, we have the good intermediate and bad based on the chemical properties. Yes, we, 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 with which we analyze under the next gen. That is why we, we can classify good, intermediate, bad, those that are good for Gary. We can see that there's no difference between the stretchability, but the main difference is the thickness and the softness. So the texture, sensory texture profile of a produced from this, the, from different cassava uh, profile. So in terms of the, of the graphs, so it's the same thing that we, I presented in, in figures. So we can see that most of the varieties, most of them, they, they, are, they are above above two, that is this, especially the, the modality, the modal, modability, so it's, it's, it's above two. And then uh, what is low there is this stretchability, as I've mentioned, there's no significant differences between the, 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 the categories of the cassava varieties used. So, um, so instrumental texture profiling of EBA as well. So this is what we obtain from the, the, the EBA we prepare from all these different types of variety. So we can see there was a significant difference in all the instrumental texture attributes of EBA prepared. So hardness, adhesiveness, resilience, modability, stretchability, and governance. So there's a significant difference, but in terms of the of the sensory uh, evaluation results, so we can see that uh, stretchability is not significant, but from the from the result from the instrument is highly significant among the different types of materials. So this is just the this is just the um, the the figure graphics picture of of the result I just presented. So um, another important thing we, 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 we did is we developed a protocol for, for, you know, for taking spectral data, and then this was validated. So a protocol was developed for the analysis of Gary, so using the near infrared. The NIST was used to collect the spectral data from the raw route, and then Gary assigned intermediate products. So what are the materials we use? We have the 
the blender because we take milled and unmilled gari. So that is the what we, because we see that as we, the gari as it is when it is being roasted, although it is being shaved and then we have uniform, we have uniform, we have uniform, we have uniform granules, but there are certain parameters in the lab that you cannot, um, you cannot analyze using the which depends on the particle size. So, so we have to blend it to another, another sieve size. So we have a uniform sieve size, and then it is good for nays as well to take the spectra. But we, we took the two spectra, we took the male and non male as well. So we use the nays cell for the collection of the spectra. So this is for me, we can see the particles. This is the mid one. So I believe that we, we have a good spectral information with the mid one. So the minimum of triplicate spectra, different sampling from the, um, the, the must be collected. So that is a critical important uh, point that must be observed. Then the repeatability test must be carried out. We carry out the repeatability test here, and then the room square error must be, be computed. So from our study, we find that the difference between the room squared, but we know that we can use software to remove the to, to, to remove the the difference between the omega ray and the, and the omega ray. So 10 replicates uh, spectra of omega ray. This is just the spectra, and this is uh, omega. This is just the spectra. So the repeatability was carried out on at least 10 reading. The absorbance values and the repeatability and indication of stability and performance of means. The root mean square of the 10 replicates were uh, calculated. Sorry. Yeah. So in conclusion, the SOP for Tesla uh, profile analysis is a first version. So we need to note that we are still working on it. And uh, the texture analysis uh, experts uh, uh, Dr. Laya is work, we are working with us in order to, to get a, a final version. And then we plan to do that in period four, using more, more uh, varieties with different uh, uh, qualities, because we want to make sure that the SOP is, can, can differentiate between all these, uh, all these different types of, uh, of cassava varieties. Instrument and sensory profile analysis will be repeated in period four in the new cassava uh, genotypes. That is, we although the sensory profile analysis is being validated, so once we validated the SOP for texture, we will repeat the sensory profile and the instrumental profile, and then we can use uh, the, the the correlation between the two. The feasibility of needs for measurement of quality training guide will be evaluated also in period four. So what we are trying to do is we want to develop a, a calibration models for the for the mid and omegary, mostly the the megari in period four, so especially for the for the functional properties of gary. So we in acknowledgement, I need to acknowledge um, Dr. Buzi Master Dixon is the focal point of WP two is focal point for WP two and also. Uh, IIT for Capon leader. And I uh, want to thank Alamo Manuel as well. Uh, we are the Wasi Bonalio Tebayo Hugo and the entire the NRCRI team. Oyedele Akim, IIT breeding team, and the RTB PNU. And finally, the BMGF, the donor for this project. Thank you very much. Thank you, Emmanuel, for having taken it over so well from Michael. It makes no doubt that uh, it is teamwork that you have been presenting, actually. And uh, this offers a very clear and a very well illustrated picture uh, of the protocols developed for, for EBA lab scale preparation, uh, for textural profiling of EBADO, and even for spectra acquisition on the intermediate GARI product at IIT IBADAN. And you have mentioned it as well. Um, two other partners um, have been collaborating, two, two other institutes have been collaborating to this work, and our CRI and Bowen University for the sensory training. So thanks for acknowledging these uh, cross-institute collaborations as well. Uh, so we may allocate some time to questions, but I will first uh, deal with the questions in the chat box. 
uh, because there are uh, nearly six questions already. I will start with uh, Dominique. Uh, Dominique is asking, what about uh, water adjustment during EBA preparation? Because people normally, traditionally, they adjust the content of water to, to the expected, uh, expected texture of the final EBA. So how do you how do you adjust or do you adjust the content of water? Yeah, thank you very much for that um, good questions. Yeah, um, in this case, from the from the standard preparation of the gari itself, we have already standardized. If you we measure the moisture content even after roast, roasting, when we press, we press to the same level. So the the gari we have have. Um, what I mean, the same condition of the moisture level. So we do not adjust any okay. for Gary level because we follow the standard preparation of Gary. People adjust the, 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 the water is because the, the procedure of preparation of Gary is not standardized. So because people can press to at any level and then they can roast and then the dryness of the, road of, of, of the roasted Gary depends on individual. But in this laboratory scale, the standardized using the standardized um, method, it has already placed every of the of the of the of the of the gari from different variety of the same level of the moisture content. So what we what we did is to make sure that we use the same quantity of water to prepare the gari, and then it gives us very good product to be, to be able to add uh, any variation we see in gari. We address it to 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 to, to the genotype. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dominique is also asking, are you using a starter for the fermentation? Not, not in this standard, not in these um, standardized uh, procedures, because what we are doing now is to standardize the traditional method. But in next gen, we have moved further. So in order to, to use a backslope uh, method to, to, read, to, to do the fermentation using starter, so to reduce the time. So the gari of three-day fermentation, we have procedure under next gen, you can prepare within the same day, and then you have the same quality. So that is backsloping method. But in this one, we don't use, we don't use that culture. Because what we did is we just try to standardize the conventional method. Okay, um, so I'm moving from one question to another quickly so that we can address uh, most questions. Uh, do you control temperature during fermentation, I, I guess, I suppose? That's yes, another question. Yes, we did. Yeah, it was, it was there in the, in the procedures. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, and that's it for Dominique. I'm going uh, uh, for, to Bolanle's questions. How do you determine the stretchability using uh, instrumental TPA? stretchability that's one of the question yeah i think um i will i will try to answer it in um in our in our in our, in our little way in the in the in the machine there is um there is um let me go back to the sorry please yes okay. yes Yeah, let me use the one. Yeah, let me use this this one. So here, what we what we are trying to do is um, the stretchability we are talking about is when the when the when the probe when the when the probe press compress these samples, and when it's leaving, we are looking at is the is is the is the is the, 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 the level of, of springiness, you know, coming up again, you know, there are some that will rise a little bit again before the second round of, of, of pressing. So I think um, some um, uh, so experts can, can explain better here for me. And that is why we interp interpret it to be, uh, to be stretchability. So we talk about the springiness of the samples. So when we press and then we remove the probe, so ability to, 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 to come back a little bit talks about how stretchable that particular um, um, EBA is. So then when you stick to the product, that one me me measure the gominess of that, of that samples. 
So maybe because we use stretchability, we have used in strengthness, but we thought that interpretation of, of strengthness, we can we can link it with stretchability. So plus it's an expert in the house, they can they can contribute to this. Thank you. I think you are evaluating adhesiveness and uh, and uh, adhesiveness is not stretchability. West, we need to develop yes. a new, we need to develop a different uh, probe. We need to, to cut the, the, the mesh to evaluate stretchability, but we will discuss after. Okay, stretchability okay. is important for the door. Okay, yeah, it's very important. We know that, yeah. Bolonli, you want to react directly? I see your hands. Yeah. Thank you very much. The springiness, but the springiness is different from the stretchability. Yes. When we are talking about the stretchability, you know, you make the airbag, you stretch. But in the case of springiness, is the way it's the, the, the probe touches it, it behaves like a spring. It will go down and come up. So that one is different from the stretchability. Stretchability in, you know, when we want to relate this thing, you define the stretchability in sensory texture profile, and then you define stretchability in instrumental texture profile. But in this case, the springiness in the instrumental texture profile is not the same thing as the stretchability. If you it use it, then why I'm asking, the, the, the reason why I asked that question really is because in our SOP development for Pandagia, we have noticed that we cannot do the stretchability. We have been trying to see how we can do the stretchability. What you can do in, in ITPA for attribute like stretchability, I think it's deformability, or you look at maybe the stringiness, but at the same time, it doesn't pull it like stringiness, like a string. Lyle and I, we discussed this several times last year, and we resolved, when we were discussing, we resolved that maybe we look at the stretchability in terms of maybe the raw material. In terms of yam, we looked at it that maybe we'll do this rheological properties because there is no way you determine the stretchability with, with the ITPA. The stretchability is not the stretchability. The governance is not, the governance can be a function of the adhesiveness in this instance, or the way it comes, but it cannot be part of the stretchability. That was actually why I asked the question. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much, Prof. Actually, there are certain times that you cannot use one factor to explain it. Such factor is stretchability. There's no way yeah. you can say yeah. one thing is going to explain stretchability. It's a combination of certain parameters. So that's what I want us to mention. Maybe yes, when, they are yes. when this slide is being prepared, it interpreted the springiness to stretchability. You shouldn't have put it there. You should have put springiness there. So that's, I'm trying just to explain that is why a change stretchability to springiness by interpreting. I agree with you. Springiness is not 100%, but it's part of it. It contributes to this stretchability factor. So, but there are a lot of other it, things to Yeah, do. I will. I yeah. Thank you. I, I would suggest, let's look at the resilience this, and the stringiness. It could be a function of the stretchability. Uh -huh. So it's, it should be a combination of the yes. of those Look at the resilience and the stringiness. It could be a function of the stretchability. Yeah. And yeah. also the gumminess can be a, a, a part of a function or part of adhesiveness too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Nice presentation and very straightforward. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm, to, I'm acting for Michael. <laughs> <It's just laughs> yeah. I know because we discussed when Michael was developing it, we discussed yeah. a lot yeah. on it. Yes, yes, it was carrying me along. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. We we really worked together on it, but um what I want us is, is, is what I want to suggest also here is we can take it to be a proof of concept, you know, in order to look for what are those parameters that can 
that can be used to explain the searchability because it appears in especially in the in the in Eba and the Panedia. Which is yeah, thank you. I agree which, with you. Yeah, yeah. So thank, thank you, thank, thank you, you very for, much. for this discussion to be continued, definitely. Um, yeah. there's, there's a question from Jim. Did you also collect nearest data from prepared EBA, so from the end product directly? Yeah, I couldn't get the question on the right, please. If you um, can it. Did you collect uh, near spectra on the EBA dough, on the final product, on the final dough, and not only on Gary, intermediate Gary? Yes, we try to, to, to do that. We, we try to collect the spectra, but and we in work packet three, we are thinking that um, um, final product will not give us more too much spectral information. So because we the reference value we are going to use is from the from the raw root or from the intermediate. And by a special product here because it has an intermediate like um, pandemic yam as well. The terminate of pandemic yam is boiled yam. But in, in this particular work we are doing um, in RTB foods, we look intermediate of pandemic yam, which is boiled yam, but we do not look at Gary really as a product profile. So this is another suggestion for this PMU. Now we look at Gary on the own because being consumed as a product, and the characteristics of the product of drinking gari is different from the characteristics of gari, you know, making a dough ever. So what we are thinking is um, we try in the lab, as um, uh, Jim has asked, we try to collect spectral data, but we have not used it because in what packet three, we think that um, spectral data from on the final product, because all the structures have been destroyed may not give us more information, but we really focus on the, on the raw root, which is the fresh material, as well as the intermediate product. But we will discuss in work packet three, I'll see that we, for the work, uh, work packet three leader is not, um, we will discuss, we did not move towards, you know, having spectral data on the final product. Thank you. So we need proof of concept, actually. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, a question from Christophe Bugo from CIRAD. He's asking why uh, apparently the mean for sensory attributes, it's only a two, point, uh, two points mainly, while the whole scale is one to 10. It's a one to 10 scale, so 10 point scale. Uh, does, it, does it mean that uh, panelists are using only a short part, a small part of the scale? Yeah, thank you very much. I, I believe that um, Akim is, is, is joining here we, because he's the one leading the, the team to do the sensory. Um, actually, when we are developing the, the protocol, the first time we use, we use zero to five. But Christoph will remember is the one that said, no, we must use zero to 10. I think the result presenting here is the one they collected from the zero to five, if I could remember. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what I can answer. But the standard procedure now says mm. is zero to 10. So if they are going to do it in period four, they are going to use zero to 10. Okay. Yeah. That's clear. Uh, a question from Suzanne. Could you comment on the trends or lack of trends between the sensory and the TPA results? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it, it, it's true. You see, this is a trial. And this is not really because we collect information from the SOP that we are developing. So after we have validated the, the we have validated the sensory profile analysis, uh, SOP for sensory profile analysis, but the textual profile analysis is still not yet validated. So we believe that if we have uh, validated SOPs, we have a better uh, relationship, the correlation between the uh, the sensory data as well as the instrumental data, I believe so. But this one is now a preliminary result. It guides us that yes, we can have a correlation, but it may not be significant. Thank you. Uh, last questions from uh, Enoch. Uh, what is the repeatability for the texture SOP 
of EBA? Uh, for the actual profile, anal uh, profile analysis of EBA, the repeatability test. Um, yeah, yeah, I think Michael is Michael online because we do not we do not uh, present, but we did the repeatability test using the the standard deviation, uh, standard deviation which is less than less than one. So we believe that once we have standard deviation of less than one of the data you obtain, we believe that it's, it's repeatable. Okay, um, yeah. and how many samples? Per day can be can be processed um, for the through the this protocol for this uh, texture protocol. Yeah, I think we I mentioned it in one in in one of my slides. The time taking for the for you know I, we have many protocols we presented today. Mm -hmm. Preparation <laughs> of Gary, then after that preparation of EBA, then after that then we have the sensory testing and then the SOP for detection. I don't know which one is being referred to, but the preparation for Gary is already mentioned there. That's, uh, it's, it's and for, that's for texture, texture measurement. For texture, uh, for, texture for texture measurement with our capacity, what we have preparation of EBA, at least we can, we can handle 10 varieties in duplicate per day. And, um, and Bolonle was asking how many replicates of EPA samples from each variety were used for the for the ITPA for this. Uh, yeah, we used to, to, to triplicate triplicate values. I okay. think I mentioned it. I mentioned it in one of SOP. Although maybe I did not mention it, but it's on this it's on the slides. Okay, perfect. I, I, I think triplicates may be too small. Maybe you should use at least eight. It gives more reliable results. Okay, for 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 texture hello? for texture measurements. Yeah, hello? I'm hearing you. I'm here. Hello. 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 Yes. 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 It's better. Yes, I'm hearing. I'm online too. So it's good to use more replicates for the texture measurements. Yeah, that, that means we need, because we, what we are thinking is if you have done your repeatability test very well, and then the SOP is standardized, then we believe that triplicate values should be able to give us the result. That's what we are thinking. We can discuss that in WP2 and said, okay, texture measurement, we need to take so, so, so numbers. So that would be a standard rule for the for the whole house. Because what we believe that this SOP yeah, is already tested, yeah. It's okay, but the replicates yeah. will depend on the material. So we cannot generalize replicates. It depends on the, uh, the product being analyzed. Okay. So, so for yeah, we can okay. we can discuss for yeah. a product now. Because it's yeah, we are taking later. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. I think we should stop here. Uh, if there are more questions, um, maybe directly write to Michael and, uh, and Emmanuel. Um, no, there is one from Xiaofei also. Xiaofei is asking in the list. Check yes, the list. but Xiaofei is not a question. It's like a long comment. So I think Xiaofei... Yeah. What about mine, Eglantine? <laughs> no, no, it's a good question. How they, they decide about good, bad, and uh, intermediate? This is the question. It's a good yeah, one. Okay. Very important. Yeah, yeah. I think I mentioned it that uh, these are next gen materials. They have worked ahead of us in WP2 in terms of um, developing. Uh, laboratory scale for preparation of a gary using starter culture, which Dominic question asked, using back, back sloping method. And um, from what they have analyzed from next gen materials is where we pick the good and bad. So what they use is they use the, the physical properties of gary, the chemical properties of gary, and then the, 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 the functional properties together to be able to classify whether it's good or it's bad or it's um, intermediate. 
So it's based on that. That is why we 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 got the good, the bad, and then the 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 intermediate from from the next gen materials. So really, we do not. It's not that we use it to prepare a bar. Then from there, we can choose which one is good, which one. If we do not standardize the SOP, we cannot be able. But from the end point of the breeding side, we had they supply a lot of materials. Then they try to analyze the functional, the physical of Gary itself. So they use it now to, 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 to classify to classify it. I think uh, that is the work we are still presented in the annual meeting of uh, of uh, next gen yeah, yeah, last year. So it's from those materials that we have collected the good and bad and, uh, and uh, intermediate. Thank you, Emmanuel. Gérard, do you want to ask your question directly? Yes, it would be I the last one. Yes, thank you very much, Eglantin. I wanted to ask uh, Alamu, what type of gari did you use? Did you use the gari with uh, uh, unrefined uh, red pan oil or without red pan oil? If it is the case, could you predict the responses uh, using the gari with red oil? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, we do not use um, uh, red palm oil in this SOP. We standardized. Gary from Southwest, they don't use red palm oil. But for, it, for, for Gary from Southeast, they had palm oil. Some had palm oil, some they don't have palm oil. So, so in this SOP, we do not use red palm oil as a standard as a standard. But the responses you are talking about, the responses depends on the region. In South, 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 um, Southeast, red palm oil responses is perfect because they are using it, it's originated from there. But in Southwest, we don't, we don't normally use palm, red palm oil in our gari. So, so that, is, that is the responses I can say that what are the responses. There are a lot of uh, publications on that. And um, even I think uh, uh, in the next gen, I think I saw some, 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 some things from there. There are some papers that I've seen. When we are reviewing, you know, publishing some review during this um, under RTB foods, there, has, there are some information that we, we, we put there, even in the Bellas paper. So the responses we are talking about depends on the, on the consumers from different regions and then the cultural background. So that's what I can say about the responses. But in this um, SOP, we did not use red palm oil. Thank you. I think it was the last question. So thanks again, uh, Emmanuel. Thanks, Michael, and thanks to all, to the to the whole team at IITA Badan uh, for this impressive uh, teamwork and this nice presentation. It was an excellent opportunity to share broadly the the work done for the characterization of a uh, EBA texture. So thanks a lot, uh, Emmanuel and Michael. Um, You're yeah, welcome. So in, in two weeks' time, uh, our webinar will be focused on ontology. It will be presented by the team of Elisabeth Arnaud from Bioversity France. And I know that mo most of us uh, are not familiar with uh, ontologies, and most of us, including me before RTB Foods, actually do not even know what the word ontology means. So if you want to learn more uh, on ontologies for quality traits uh, and the progress done in RTB Foods project as well, because we developed ontologies for sensory traits already. And uh, if you want to, um, to learn more what, why, ontologies are needed when we when we talk about shared databases and this is the objective in RTB foods to share our databases um, so let's join an, on two weeks in two weeks let's join on, on zoom for this uh, for this uh, webinar and then thanks again again for joining today sorry for the for the technical uh, challenges that we faced and um, and for this uh, for this um, for this, uh, yes, be, be, for being late, sorry. And, um, and have a nice afternoon and a, a nice end of week.